Another area of defense mechanisms is the area known as displacement. So displacement is when something really bothers us, might make us really angry or really sad or really fearful, and they give us a lot of unpleasant emotions, but we can't respond to the target that gave us those emotions because the target is unsafe to respond to. So we respond to something else. A very classic example would be if someone was at work and their boss yelled and screamed at them and really made them feel terrible about themselves, they don't want to yell right back at their boss because then that's going to put their employment in jeopardy. So instead, they come home from work and they find another target that might be their family members it might be their kids it might be their video game controller it might mean their house they can find something else that they transfer it on to other types of displacement might be including using yourself as the target and this can be through self-harm some common forms of self-harm that we see is binge eating or using a lot of substances like alcohol or smoking to deal with it the more you're upset so you're just going to stuff food in your mouth because that act of eating is what's calming you down, uh, then that's considered to be displacement. And so displacement is when you're transferring your negative emotions onto accessible targets. And these targets are usually things that are more vulnerable than yourself or they are yourself. So it's when someone comes home and they smash their video game remote control or they yell at their dog or they stuff their face in the fridge just to cope with their day. Uh, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about displacement. Obviously, this is a problem. This is how the cycle of domestic violence continues. And it's also how substance abuse continues. And so displacement is not an adaptive strategy, but it is a really common strategy. Now, a similar strategy to displacement is projection. Projection is the idea when you're unhappy about something about yourself, you can't admit that in yourself. It's causing you a lot of anxiety and a lot of stress to admit your flaws. So instead you attribute and accuse others of having the same flaws. This is a little bit complicated, but we often see this in a romantic partnership. If one person is cheating and they feel so guilty about cheating and having an affair, they don't admit it to themselves. They don't reconcile it and actually think about it and process it. Instead, they get really paranoid and suspicious that their partner is the one that's cheating. And they start to get really angry and hostile and look for all these senses that they're cheating. It's also that they feel like cheating is now more normative. If they're cheating, their partner's probably cheating, but they start to accuse and get mad at them. Or if they were really frivolous with money and spent a lot of money, now they're going to accuse their partner of being frivolous with money. Or if they have a problem with overeating, they accuse others of having a problem with overeating. This is, we often hear the tripe, the pot calling the kettle black. This is the idea that you're, un, you're unwilling to acknowledge your own problems, but you point out and, and criticize the problems and shortcomings in others, even ones that are completely fabricated. And this is the idea that admitting your flaws is going to be so stressful and so anxiety provoking that this is how you're coping with it. And this is not considered adaptive. This is considered pretty harmful because well, now you're going around pointing fingers and blaming other people for lots of things that are probably fabricated and you're not acknowledging and taking responsibility for yourself. Yet we know that projection happens a lot. This is the idea that somebody could be really irritable and stressed out and they yell at other people and say, you are being irrational, you are hard to work with, when really they're the one that's hard to work with. So we do see this all the time. Now, similar to projection, but a bit more advanced, is the defense mechanism of reaction formation. So reaction formation is the idea that we are not willing to accept our flaws to the point that we will adopt different beliefs or alternative facts contrary to what is going on. And so this is the idea that sometimes uh, if somebody disagrees with you, you'll say that you changed your beliefs. Let's say uh, you're talking about how you're going to vote and somebody says, oh, I wouldn't vote for that candidate. And that's the candidate you were hoping to vote for. All of a sudden you change your beliefs because you want to see more socially acceptable. That's a really mild version of reaction formation. However, reaction formation can get really big and really intense. The goal of reaction formation is always to appear more angelic and more socially acceptable. And this can get really intense. For example, if somebody was in the closet about being gay and they know that being gay is not socially acceptable in some social circles, they push it down so much to the point that they change their beliefs and say that being gay is bad. And we've seen this in public figures who go out and make legislation about penalizing or making the lives of LGBTQ individuals more difficult because that politician in particular is closeted. 
that is classic reaction formation where they're so not willing to accept their own reality that instead of just pointing fingers, which would be projection and accusing other people of being gay, they also go and legislate laws that penalize being a sexual minority and make the life of LGBTQ individuals harder. We can also see reaction formation in less intense examples. Let's say somebody is a smoker, but they believe that smoking is problematic. And they're like, oh, smoking is disgusting. I don't like smoking, but then they continue to smoke. And so it's the idea that they're adopting beliefs that are contrary to their own because they want to appear more socially acceptable. They might tell everybody, oh, I don't like smoking, I don't like smoking, but then they continue to smoke in secret. Or they talk about how people should always have a clean house and what are you doing? There's no reason to be a slob when really they're the person who has the sloppiest house. Well, that sounds a lot like projection, so let's clarify this. Someone with projection would have a messy house and accuse others of having messy houses. But reaction formation goes above that to the point of adopting the belief that everyone should always have a clean house and here's all the things and of course I have a clean house and they start to lie about themselves. So we see projection and reaction formation go together a lot of the time and reaction formation is a bit more of an extreme projection where it involves not just accusing others but changing your version of reality about yourself. And this one isn't really the pot calling the kettle black but it more so goes with people in glass houses shouldn't throw rocks and it's the idea that you are not acknowledging your vulnerabilities but you're going out and tossing rocks and making life harder for other people because you think that you are perfect, but you're not. So it should make sense that reaction formation is not very psychologically adaptive. It can make a lot of people miserable, including yourself, and it's not helpful in the short term or the long term. It may help someone to feel a little bit more socially desirable in the short term, but it's false, it's disingenuine, and that's just gonna cause more anxiety, what's going to spiral out and cause them using defense mechanisms about even more things. So reaction formation is not considered to be good. In addition, we have rationalization. Rationalization is really the blame game. It's swapping the truth for something that is more socially desirable. So again, rationalization could go hand in hand with reaction formation. You can almost think of reaction formation as being the combination of rationalization and projection. But rationalization on its own here, this is really when we swap the truth for something that people will like us more for. So if somebody says, why were you late for your test? Why don't you have your homework done? Why didn't this deadline get met? You don't tell them the truth. You don't say, oh, I slept in, or oh, I partied hard on the weekend, or oh, I just didn't have the motivation, or I had a panic attack. Instead of telling them the truth, you say, oh, I had car trouble, or oh, I had a family emergency, or oh, I was sick on the weekend, because those seem to be more socially acceptable excuses. Modern society really encourages rationalization. This is the idea you tell people what they want to hear. But it also helps us to protect the ego because it makes us feel like we didn't mess up. There was a logical reason for this. Now, sometimes other cognitive psychologists will use the term rationalization to refer to actually acknowledging the truth. Freud is not using rationalization in this way. According to Freud's definition of rationalization, it's not about looking objectively at the truth. It's about swapping the truth with a socially desirable white lie or not so white lie. And this is the idea that we cover up and we try and find an alibi, or if we get charged and subpoenaed to court, we plead non-guilty and we try and get off on a technicality rather than taking responsibility for what we did. We're covering it and we're trying to get around based on blaming someone else or blaming the circumstances. So this is the idea if somebody's struggling with money, they don't say, oh yeah, I have this problem, I keep overspending money on payday. Instead, they say, well, it's not my fault. The bills are just too big or it's not my fault, my boss didn't give me the raise I wanted. And so we see this a lot when it comes to university. This is the idea where when a student gets a grade they don't like, they blame the professor instead of blaming their ability to meet the merits and the criteria in the course. And so rationalization helps us to feel better about ourselves because we're not attacking ourselves, we're blaming other things. But it can also be problematic if the blaming of other things has serious repercussions, such as accusing others of really serious stuff.